Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Plans for a live televised debate on the Brexit deal between the Prime Minister and Jeremy Corbyn are up in the air. Theresa May has agreed to take part in a BBC debate, but Mr Corbyn says he's in favour of a proposal from ITV. Our deputy political editor, John Pienaar, sent this report. Lots of travelling, plenty of salesmanship, but who's buying? Theresa May's taken her Brexit plan round the country, and now it's emerged she's keen to make a pitch on primetime TV, confronting Labour's leader. But the hardest sell is at Westminster, and today she faced MPs, the toughest customers of all. Throughout this process, people have been telling me we wouldn't reach this point. As soon as we do reach this point, people want to say, oh, well, if you don't get it, what are you going to do next? I'm focusing on getting this. But there was doubt and hostility on all sides. The rights that you and I had to live, work and love across a continent of 28 nations is going to be deprived to our young people because of your obsession with immigration. No. It's quite something when our own Chancellor and our own Bank of England Governor trashes the future of our country as part of a propaganda exercise. That's that what's is, happening, isn't that it? That is not what is happening. Knowing you for 20 years, I just don't believe that if your deal goes down, you are the kind of person who would contemplate taking this country into a no-deal situation. Am I wrong? The decision, it will be a decision for Parliament as to whether they accept the deal that I and the government have negotiated. Mrs May won't discuss what happens if her plan's voted down, but that's about all MPs are discussing. Ministers publicly backing her now are ready to split apart later. Some closer to Europe, others ready to leave without a deal after time to prepare. Labour votes could be crucial, so the news Jeremy Corbyn and Mrs May want a TV debate could be significant. She favours facing him and questions from a panel, the BBC idea. He prefers ITVs, a straight one-on-one -on -one debate. The ITV offer seemed a sensible one, it reaches a wide audience and the timing looked good to me because it's not inconveniencing people who may wish to watch other things later in the evening. Even if we do, campaigners for a fresh referendum say the country and their own parties need what they're calling a people's vote. A botched, bungled Brexit that sees us cede control and makes every part of the country poorer than it would otherwise be would surely risk doing serious damage to the Conservative Party. They're carolling round here today, but nothing will get MPs or parties singing from the same sheet by Christmas. John Pienaar, BBC News, Westminster. Theresa May and the Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn clashed today over plans to stage a TV Brexit debate two days before MPs vote on the deal. The Prime Minister has accepted an offer to go on the BBC. Mr Corbyn says he prefers to go on ITV to avoid a clash with the final of I'm a Celebrity. And there was a taste of what could be in store as both leaders were quizzed today over their plans. Our political correspondent Libby Vina reports. This is an important point in our history. While the Prime Minister was getting her message across in a rather formal setting today, the Labour leader, Jeremy Corbyn, was doing much the same on a TV sofa. Well, our priority is, first of all, to defeat this deal. Very different styles, which may indicate how they might perform in any TV debate. But what, if anything, would the public learn, judging by what Mrs May told MPs, not a huge amount? What if she lost the key vote, she was asked. Is there any internal planning going on in number 10? As I have made clear, my focus is on the vote that will take place in the, uh, on the 11th of December here in this house. I think we understand that, that is, Prime yes, Minister. But, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, But is there Mr. any Baird. planning I'm sorry, Mr. going Baird. on for that? What, what I am focused on and what the government is focused on is the vote that will take place on December the 11th. Knowing you for 20 years, I just don't believe that if your deal goes down, you are the kind of person who would contemplate taking this country into a no-deal situation. Am I wrong? The decision, it will be a decision for Parliament as to whether they accept the deal that I and the government have negotiated. 
Those who know Mrs May could well be surprised to learn that she's now agreed to a TV debate, having for years rejected all such offers. But not everything's going to plan. She said yes to the BBC, while Jeremy Corbyn seems to have another option in mind. The ITV offer seemed a sensible one. It reaches a wide audience and the timing looked good to me because it's not inconveniencing people who may wish to watch other things later in the evening. One should always have respect for the viewers. And also, we want to get the widest possible... So your and debate most diverse is based audience. around people being able to watch the I'm a Celebrity <laughs> final. Indeed so. <laughs> Maybe I want to watch it myself as well. But winning round MPs is what will actually count. When one compared her deal to Monty Python's dead parrot, the leader of the House said this. Well, uh, the honourable gentleman alludes to that parrot, and that parrot had snuffed it, he will remember. Um, this parrot is the only one in the aviary, and I think that it is therefore worth serious consideration. Serious consideration, hardly a ringing endorsement of a deal on which the Prime Minister has staked her political life. And Libby joins us live from Westminster. Bizarre day, Libby, but is the TV debate going to happen? Well, Alistair, as with everything to do with Brexit, it's complicated. The leaders of the two main parties have agreed to a debate, but on different channels. The Liberal Democrats, meanwhile, say they want to be included, as do the SNP. That party's leader, Nicola Sturgeon, tweeting that it would be a travesty if no one who had supported Remain was included. I think you also have to ask what the Prime Minister hopes to gain from an event which is appealing essentially to a mass TV audience, when it's the audience in the building behind me that she has to convince. Those uh, backing a second referendum today have suggested if the Prime Minister is so interested in what people think, then she should put it back to the people. I have to say her campaigning this week, together with this talk of a TV debate, does rather smack of a dress rehearsal. Maybe, thank you. Krishna. Well, with just a couple of weeks to go before Parliament votes on whether or not to accept the government-backed EU withdrawal bill, Theresa May has accepted the BBC's invitation to a head-to-head -head Brexit debate with the Labour leader, Jeremy Corbyn. But he's not agreed to it yet, saying he'd rather do it with ITV. Our political correspondent, Michael Crick, assesses the day's development. Brexit split the country and now it's dividing broadcasters. Today, the BBC said Theresa May wants to take part in a debate two days before the big Commons vote, suitably for a dancer after the results show of Strictly Come Dancing. Likely audience, nine million. But Labour think number 10 and the Beeb are engaged in a cosy stitch-up. Jeremy Corbyn says he is keen to debate, but prefers ITV. The ITV offer seemed a sensible one. It reaches a wide audience and the timing looked good to me because it's not inconveniencing people who may wish to watch other things later in the evening. One should always have respect for the viewers. An ITV debate would precede the final of I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. Audience, around 10 million. Yet both die-hard Brexiteers and Remainers say May and Corbyn aren't the right debaters. The idea that you have... Theresa May and Jeremy Corbyn, who both have policies that say Brexit has to happen. Jeremy Corbyn, we know, pretty reluctant on the people's vote, even if that's part of his party's policy. And the people's vote campaign itself has gone from a standing start to being the most popular outcome in eight months. And meanwhile, if you're a proper Brexiteer, like a Rhys Mogg or a, or a Johnson, you're excluded as well. So I think the broadcasters really have to look to themselves to see whether this is actually within their doing what they define as their own responsibilities, because I don't. There needs to be a representative of the two options that currently sit on the table. That is this deal, which I guess should be the Prime Minister, and that is a world trade deal, which is the no deal situation. What about uh, a Remainer? Um, currently, I think Corbyn is a Remainer, and May was a Remainer. This morning, Theresa May went to the Commons to be grilled by MPs who chair major committees. Hillary Benn asked whether Downing Street had options ready if MPs reject her deal in a fortnight's time. Is there any internal planning going on in number 10? As I have made clear, my focus is on the vote that will take place 
in the, uh, on the 11th of December here in this house. I think we understand that, that is, Prime yes, Minister. But, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, But is there any Penn. planning I'm sorry, going Penn. on for that? What, what I am focused on and what the government is focused on is the vote that will take place on December the 11th. When she discussed Britain's future relations with the EU, one MP rather confused her. We're going to be very good friends and working closely, uh, working closely friends together. Friends with benefits? Uh, the, <laughs> sorry? <laughs> I missed your quip, I'm sorry. About Friends that. with benefits, Prime Minister. <laughs> she didn't really seem to get the joke. Right now, there doesn't seem to be any majority in Parliament for any option on Brexit, except against the idea of no deal. Mrs May will continue her tour around the country trying to sell her deal to the people. And yet at the same time, there are also renewed efforts to get the people involved in another referendum, a so-called people's vote. And three Conservative former senior ministers argued today MPs could clear up the current Brexit mess with a new referendum, which they say could happen by the end of May. Personally, I think MPs should take their heads out of the sand and, and their duty really is to help navigate Britain through this moment. But I believe that once we do reach that moment of gridlock, then MPs will consider what to do and clearly a referendum I think is the best route through. With most Tories and many Labour MPs still hostile to the idea, there's probably not now a Commons majority for another referendum. Yet amid the likely turmoil of the next few weeks, that could well change. Well, for those wondering what the government's immigration policy uh, might be after Brexit, Mrs May was asked several times at the Liaison Committee today uh, whether she'd publish the immigration white paper, much weighted uh, white paper, before the vote in the Commons in 13 days' time. And several times Mrs May just wouldn't say. And, Michael, it, it turns England's managers weighed in on the issue of Brexit. Uh, is that true? Yes, uh, an interesting uh, documentary on ITV4 last night about black footballers. Gareth Southgate, the England manager, uh, explained that uh, his strategy for the, uh, his rather successful campaign at the World Cup in Russia uh, during the summer was partly based on his fears over uh, Brexit and what had happened during the referendum campaign. This is what Southgate said. I didn't like the connotations around Brexit. There were some generational opinions about what modern Britain should look like. We felt that young people in particular would connect with our guys because they must have been confused after Brexit because for me a lot of the undertones of the voting on Brexit were, were racial undertones. Well, Theresa May has made it clear that she thinks her current Brexit deal, which the Commons will be voting on uh, on the 11th of December, will uh, will help bring the nation together again. But uh, Gareth Southgate's remarks there rather suggest that uh, there's maybe a long way to go on that. Michael Crick. Now, uh, before we get on to the next story, let me just point out that the clip we used a couple of minutes ago of the England football manager Gareth Southgate was taken from the ITV programme Out of Their Skin. Just want to give them due credit. Now, it's been exactly 20 months since Theresa May formally fired the starting gun for Brexit negotiations by triggering Article 50. The Commons vote on the deal she has secured is fast approaching and it's being attacked from all sides in Westminster and, crucially, by many of her own MPs. Mrs May has resisted the siren calls of warring factions and come up with something in the middle of the road, says one former Cabinet Minister. But is the agreement reached with the EU a product of design or accident? Our political editor, Gary Gibbon, has been asking how we got here and whether the deal we have today is a result of careful positioning or concession making as the screw turned. I am therefore withdrawing from the leadership election and I wish Theresa May the very greatest success. I look back now at a photo of me obviously furious standing behind Andrea on the steps of that house as she stood down. I assure her of my full support. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Because I knew that we were in a position where someone who didn't really in their heart and soul believe in it was going to be leading the country. <laughs> Pro-Brexit candidates had fallen away. I'm naturally disappointed. Leaving Theresa May with the top job but no real plan. 
there was no evidence that anyone uh, had done half an hour's thinking about what happens uh, if the referendum votes no and Britain then has to Brexit. Uh, all of it had to be done on blank sheets of paper. Brexit means Brexit. I want to ensure that we get a red, white and, red, white and blue Brexit. At her first conference as leader, AIDS sensed politics. Winning over Leave voters is very much driving the strategy. They find your patriotism distasteful. Your concerns about immigration parochial. I think there's certainly true looking back that the early statements raised expectations uh, and built on a Leave campaign that had done similar things. Against the advice of some senior officials, she announced a date for Article 50, the letter kicking off time-limited negotiations. We will invoke Article 50 no later than the end of March next year. Politics was red hot. People were urging, you know, people look back now and say, oh, you triggered Article 50, you know, too quickly, you shouldn't have done it at that time. Well, at that point, if you'd tried to hold it back any further, you'd have been absolutely crucified. Some Brexiteers worried Brexit wouldn't happen if the letter didn't go in. The papers joined in her fight in the courts against Parliament getting a role in triggering Article 50. The tone was still shrill and Theresa May was still trying to knock on individual EU leaders' doors, as one key negotiator recalls. I think that for a, a long time, for a, a number of months, um, the British considered that ultimately uh, D27 will choose their national and economic interests uh, over the grand principles of the European Union. But in a speech at Lancaster House at the beginning of last year, Theresa May showed something substantial was changing in her approach. Whether that means we must reach a completely new customs agreement, become an associate member of the customs union in some way, or remain a signatory to some elements of it, I hold no preconceived position. The language about the customs union in Lancaster House speech is far, far more nuanced than people now give it credit for. Um, and it didn't explicitly say we would be coming out of a customs union. Old allies of Theresa May, like her then deputy, suggest this was the moment the plan shifted. That was the moment when the policy and, and the politics came together and, and, and that was the text uh, from which everything was meant to flow. That, that was the big speech. From the moment the Article 50 letter was handed over, a two-year deadline kicked in. So, here it is. Six pages. The clock is ticking. Some uh, British uh, politicians, I think it was a position expressed by Mr. Davis himself, uh, thought that one year was absolutely sufficient to negotiate the withdrawal agreement and the agreement on the uh, status uh, for the future of UK. Uh, this uh, was a, a very a very uh, a poor analysis. The European Commission's negotiating stance has hardened. Threats against Britain have been issued by European politicians and officials. All of these acts have been deliberately timed to affect the result of the general election. Theresa May deliberately struck a strident anti-EU tone in the snap election, she called. A tabloid backing group joined in. It got many pro-Brexit voters on side, but it drove away many pro-Remain ones. Until that point, actually, I think she sort of managed to walk the sort of uh, the wire quite well in terms of keeping people on side. But I think that was one of the key moments when suddenly she became a, a divisive Brexiteer as opposed to a prime minister trying to bring the country together. To be honest, I'm concerned. Uh, time passes quickly. A soft focus EU video explains how much of the talks was about citizens' rights, Britain paying up for spending committed to while a member. But as the clock ticked, Britain, in a hurry, accepted Michel Barnier's insistence that there must be a pledge in treaty law that there will be no hard border between Ireland and Northern Ireland. It would be one of the most decisive moments in the talks. Just after the election, Theresa May made the self-proclaimed rebel commander of the European Research Group pro-Brexit MPs a minister. I'm probably not, not the most risk-averse member of Parliament. But that's he now thinks there. he was camouflaged for a soft Brexit and that the Irish backstop was a means to make sure Britain hugged Europe close.
This is something being planted in the Article 50 uh, work, which bleeds into the future relationship and somehow now seems to have smothered and entangled well, it. Was it a plot? I don't think we can know whether there was a, a plot, as it were, until we've got access to the archives in whatever, 20, 30 years. But you've got a nagging suspicion. But that there is a nagging suspicion amongst all of us that the Irish border issue has been tremendously overinflated in order to justify a high alignment Brexit. Theresa May stands alone outside the EU summit meeting room in Salzburg. Soon after the setbacks here, though, she got the EU to flip round and allow her the UK-wide customs arrangement Michel Barnier had said she couldn't have. And the UK wants to use Ireland as a kind of test case for the future EU-UK custom relations. This will not happen. We agreed to create an EU-UK single customs territory. Maybe time pressures had got to them too. A deal was struck. With the direction of travel as close to Europe's institutions as ending freedom of movement would allow. The British people want this to be settled. Aid says she always wanted the closest deal possible that ended freedom of movement. Thank you very much. Far cry from some election rhetoric, a hard sell to some in her own party, who now feel she probably always had it in for them and their approach. Perhaps if Theresa May had had a majority of 100 or more, I think perhaps she would have sought to crush, crush the ERG and crush those ideas. We might have got to where we are now even quicker. Well, we might have done. Yeah, it's conceivable. I wouldn't, certainly wouldn't use words like crush them, but it was about getting some flexibility. It, because Brexit is divisive. It's divisive in the party, it's divisive in the country. She could have outvoted So you needed them. some flexibility. Um, now, what to use it for? Well, that depends how the negotiation goes. But it was but to it get was the around flexibility them. was the key thing. It was to get round the hardcore like him. Well, I think it was to definitely make sure there was a plurality of voices in the party. It's actually. not quite how it was sold at the time. It's not how it was sold at the time, but then I might not have sold it in the way it was. The clock now ticks to the Commons vote on the Great Compromise. There were fans of Norway, there were fans of Canada, uh, there were fans of, of, of No Deal, and you know, we ended up with, with 700,000 people marching saying, please, can we start again? Um, so this was at least a, a, a four-sided uh, contest um, and you know, funnily enough the, the Prime Minister has ended up you know, somewhere in the middle which is probably a sensible pragmatic place for a Prime Minister to be. It is traditionally where politicians strike gold but Europe stirs potent forces in politics and these are strange times. Well, Theresa May has accepted the BBC's offer to debate her Brexit deal with Jeremy Corbyn on Sunday the 9th of December two days before MPs vote on it. There's just one problem. Well, many actually. Not least the Labour leader hasn't agreed. He says he prefers the ITV option, which doesn't clash with I'm a Celebrity. Add to that that the format hasn't been agreed, nor the terms of the debate as it is, for many, not a binary choice. Other political leaders, Nicola Sturgeon, Scotland's First Minister, the Lib Dem leader, Vince Cable, the Greens, the DUP, Plaid Cymru, hard Brexiteers, Remainers, EFTA supporters, the backers of a people vote, all want to take part. Indeed, the People's Vote organisers have made a formal complaint to the BBC and Ofcom about potential exclusion from the debate. Add to that, it may look like a general election debate, except it's not. Here's Chris Cook. The very image of majesty. Sunday night is a ratings battleground. BBC One's Strictly Come Dancing is watched by nearly 9 million people. <laughs> ITV's juggernaut, I'm a Celebrity, clocks in at just under 10 million. But there's a hot new property out there that ITV and the BBC both want. The Brex Factor. Well, look, that's what I'm calling it anyway. The plan, and it's still tentative, is for a debate between Theresa May and Jeremy Corbyn on the merits of her withdrawal deal, which she supports and he doesn't. But this debate plan has critics. So the last time when we had a general election where the people had a vote, she said, I don't believe in TV debates. Now, when the people don't have a vote, she says, I believe in TV debates, but only against Jeremy Corbyn and we both support Brexit. I mean, it's, it's bonkers. 
I mean, I'm no fan of Boris Johnson or Jacob Rees-Mogg, but to, to exclude that wing of the Brexit debate, which you have to say is what a lot of people voted for, and to exclude the people's vote, somebody like Nicola Sturgeon or one of the other MPs that has very, very clearly been out for a people's vote, I think it's a, it's a total absurdity. But there's political logic to the Prime Minister's decision to suggest this debate. The principle is this is about framing a choice, either go with me or go with him. And that essentially means Jeremy Corbyn, he's the other person that this, is, this whole debate discussion is about. If you have a situation where you put other people onto that panel, we've seen what happens before Nick Clegg, for example, back in 2010, it totally skews the situation. And also you have the real difficulty of putting Tories versus Tories. And that is a situation that no Prime Minister would ever want. So maybe it should be extended to include further people. But just agreeing terms in any political debates is an absolute nightmare. We wanted to get every possible advantage we could get for Gordon. So Gordon's good on the economy. We wanted a debate on the economy. We wanted Gordon to appear prime ministerial talking about foreign affairs. We wanted Cameron to be taken out of his comfort zone, literally, to Manchester. And we succeeded in getting everything that we wanted. And I think that's part of the problem is number 10 tends to get what it wants. There's also a bit of a clash between the broadcasters. The government is said to prefer going with the BBC's option, while Jeremy Corbyn is said to prefer going with ITV. All I know is that I've accepted the idea of a debate, very happy to do so. I did that on Sunday night as soon as the Prime Minister made the suggestion. The ITV offer seemed a sensible one. It reaches a wide audience and the timing looked good to me because it's not inconveniencing people who may wish to watch other things later in the evening. One should always have respect for the viewers. And also we want to get the widest possible. So your and debate most diverse is based audience. around people being able to watch the IMS 11 <laughs> final. Indeed so. It could matter. Setting the debate up as May versus Corbyn further reduces the chances of Labour supporting a withdrawal agreement at some stage. But in truth, only if things go disastrously wrong for one of them will it compete for ratings with, say, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. Chris Cook, well, we asked to speak to the BBC, ITV and the government but they didn't want to put anyone up to talk about this. But now I am joined by the SNP's culture, media and sports spokeswoman in Westminster, Hannah Bardell, MP. Uh, good evening uh, to you, Hannah uh, Bardell. First of all, isn't it reasonable to assume that when it comes to negotiation, it's either going to be Conservative or Labour? So they are the main two that should be on that stage. I think what we've heard from the programme up until now has become far too much about what individual politicians mm -hmm. may or may not want. And the reality is that you know we've had devolution in the UK for you know 20 years. The broadcasters need to catch up with that. This isn't difficult. The SNP are the largest party uh, in Scotland at Westminster. We have 35 MPs. We've won the last two elections uh, at Westminster in Scotland. We are in charge in government in Scotland and have been for over 10 years. But it is our democratic right to be involved in those debates. But and if it is the democratic duty of the broadcasters mm -hmm. to make to sure that all voices, not just the SNP, but the devolved nations and leave and remain are represented uh, yeah, and, and respected. hard Brexiteers and um, people's vote and so forth. And I wonder, you know that the people's vote have actually put in a formal complaint, yeah. both the BBC and Ofcom. Well, you know, good on them. The deal is the only deal on the table. Would you take part in the debate and call and complain, make a formal complaint if you weren't going to be included? Well, I think we've got a little while to go before you know, the final decision days. on that. Well, it, not long and, and quite incredible that the broadcasters didn't get around the table and think about this sooner. Well, but none, nonetheless, this is, this is not difficult. The reality is that we have had in previous general elections uh, the rainbow of different parties. And you saw it. I mean, it was like seven or eight people. And it was people. really positive. But, you know, what we know from the public it, is they are fed up of the binary nature of UK politics. It's stuck in the past. It, and we must reflect, and the broadcasters must reflect, the range it, of voices and views on this issue and across the UK in terms of devolution. But we the, have but, four but, nations. Do you accept? They need to be represented. And also, we were told Scotland voted by 62% to leave the EU and we've been told that we're going to be dragged out against our will. 62% UK to remain, you mean? It, Sorry, yes, 62% <laughs> yeah. to remain, my apologies. It, we voted 62% to yes, remain but we're, we're and we're going moment, to be taken are... out against our will. And in a UK-wide 
We were told that that was a UK-wide vote and we have to be dragged out against our will. But in a UK-wide debate, we're not allowed to be part of that. I'm sorry. That just doesn't cut it, and you can't have it all into but, the middle. I mean, I mean, you say that these debates before were very, uh, you know, energising or whatever. It was crazy. There were seven people. It's very hard. Can you imagine? on the nature of what's being discussed on Brexit with a deal on the table and the only deal on the table, if every single part of it is unpicked in a debate, what is the public going to think? I think the public really enjoyed the fact that they got to see different voices, different perspectives. Brexit is a hugely complex issue and it's a democratic travesty that people didn't get properly informed so, until after the event. So, this debate allows the opportunity to, for it to be opened up to respect the nature of devolution. But the because voters it is going to, can't it, vote. There is no vote. We're, we're, we're so beyond that now. There's so no what, vote. So, well, and we also, well, we also have the ridiculous situation that both Theresa May and Jeremy Corbyn aren't in favour of the single market and customs union. So what's the point well, in having two of them on? You might as well just have one each on each channel. That's a ridiculous argument. If you follow the logic through, we have to make sure so, that all of those views are respected. It is a complex issue. I think that the broadcasters can get together. We can come up with a sensible solution. And so you Otherwise, back the idea of the debate. Sorry, just, just yes or no, you actually back the idea of a debate per se. Oh, absolutely. We absolutely right. backed the idea of okay. a debate. We were part of the, the petition that Sky put together that's now got over 100,000 supporters mm -hmm. to have a television debates as part of the democratic process, as a standard part of elections. And, and we're going to come along to talk about that. But just if this government collapses, would the SNP give confidence uh, to Jeremy Corbyn only if he said he would grant a second referendum? That's been discussed, hasn't it? Well, there, on independence, look, sorry, not on, the, or not on the EU. I'm talking about Scottish independence. If, uh, would you support Jeremy Corbyn if he agreed a second independence referendum for Scotland? Well, I think that we have to wait and see what happens. I mean, at the end of the day, we have said, we said at the last two elections that we would work as a progressive force at Westminster. We have to see what's put on mm -hmm. the table. We have to see, I mean, at the moment, Jeremy Corbyn doesn't even back being in the EU. He doesn't know what his policy is. His party is all over the place. But there is good cross-party work happening behind the scenes to stay in the single market and customs union. The SNP is very focused on that. Thank you and very much, Hannah Bardem. I'm afraid I have to fi finish you off here because we have two guests here in the studio. I'm joined by two people who have been involved in TV debates on both sides of the camera for good and ill. Sky News' is Adam Bolton and Aisha Hazarika, former advisor to Ed Miliband, who helped him prep for his debates in 2015. Uh, good evening uh, to both of you. You heard there what Hannah was saying. That it's all for one and one for all. She wants everybody in. Um, the Sky debates originally were quite clean. What do you make of the idea that we're going to have all shades of a uh, Brexit discussion? Well, I think we ought to remember that if Jeremy Corbyn and Theresa May alone face off to each other, it would never have happened before. So mm. from our point of view, that is a, a major development in uh, broadcasting, if you like. But uh, the other thing we have to remember, as you rightly pointed out, there's not an election in the offing. This is a programme aimed at the people. The people don't actually have a, yeah, have a I suppose, say in this. I suppose, so, I suppose Theresa yeah. May's uh, judgment is that suddenly there'll be you know, lots of uh, outpourings from the public after these debates. You know, telling their MPs yeah. to get on with it and back Brexit. Well, you know, I've, I've been organizing, trying to get debates going, I think, you know, going back into the <laughs> 1980s. And I remember Michael Dobbs, you know, he of House of Cards, yes. when he was working with the Tories, he said the easiest <laughs> way to stop debates happening is to pit the broadcasters against each other. And, of course, this is what's happening yeah, now. Yeah, with, with a very short time span. Which is why we want this we, independent debates commission. We don't have because, two years that Theresa May's had yeah. the Brexit. We've got ten days. Exactly. So, uh, Aisha, good idea or bad idea in principle to have these debates at all? I think the problem is is intellectually incoherent right now because this is not an election campaign. Normally you would have leaders debates, ideally you'd watch the two people that are vying for that top job to be Prime Minister. This is a very, very different situation. We know that Brexit transcends party lines in both the main parties. Very sympathetic to the SNP argument about the other nations and regions. And of course, and also I'm within a, Labour itself. Absolutely. And I think, you know, while I'm within a, Tories, absolutely, I mean, it, it transcends both part, all parties. Well, two, the big two parties are divided on it. It's incoherent because Theresa May is trying to get into our living rooms mm -hmm. as the public to say, look, what do you think of Brexit? Yet she won't let us have a vote on it. So it doesn't make any sense. And the problem is, if it's Theresa May and Jeremy Corbyn, I think that will be quite a kind of, it will be quite an unsatisfactory debate because these issues, there's so many different issues of Brexit to be um, teased mm -hmm. out. And also in the rhythm of an election campaign, you have, you know, 
every party has a grid. You use the debates actually to kind of give a bit of, um, you know, uh, sort of punctuate the rhythm of the campaign, climaxing and ideally also, and also in their big hard, two hard kind of way. prep, as you did for Ed Miliband, a lot of prep. Oh, the prep is extraordinary. I mean, we had days and days and days. We had weekends away. We were flying in people from America. I mean, oh my it God, was, you did a lot of money. It was a, it was a lot of time and money well, to do it properly. Adam, what do you make of the BBC today, kind of tweeting out about this? You know, getting involved in a way that it hasn't. Before. Well, what's happened as far as we know is that. First of all, this is a Mrs May's gift, yeah. which I would argue it shouldn't be, which yeah. is why you should have, why a, debates you should have this debates commission. But yes. once she said that, she went round the broadcasters and said, what do you propose? And the problem is that Jeremy Corbyn, who accepted her challenge, liked what ITV are offering, yeah. she likes what the BBC are offering, and we've got a standoff. And unless one of them gives way and goes with the other's plan, it's the public that's going to lose out because they're not going to see this debate. And, and, what, and, and, and tell me on this idea... Uh, that there's a formal complaint by the People's Vote campaign, both to Ofcom and to the BBC. Would that hold water? I don't think so. We're not in an election period. No. And, you know, the other point about this debate is we think, you know, we've been campaigning for debates at election time because Parliament is not it, sitting. But, but do you agree with... Parliament's going to debate I this know, for but do, you agree with, do you agree with Aisha that actually it's not, it's not going to be very illuminating uh, with just Jeremy Corbyn and Theresa May because actually those positions are not the positions well, of the parties? no, because I think it's how you produce it, isn't yes. it? This is where our well, professionalism yes. comes into it, if I you know. like. And clearly, we don't really know what Jeremy Corbyn thinks about... Europe. A no deal Brexit or Europe, <laughs> indeed. We don't really know uh, whether either of them, in the end, would go, really go for a second would referendum. Do, would, you, would you put a hard Brexiteer on? Would you put Jacob Rees Mogg on? But this is why I think you, you have to. This is why it's in, you know, with all the respect to the great kind of production teams and the great kind of anchor people in this. This is not going to satisfy anybody because you have to have different ranges. And in terms of the people's vote, there is a growing view that people do want to have a final say on this. And also, the other thing, if it's just Jeremy Corbyn and Theresa May, Theresa May will want to talk about the nerdy details of this deal. Jeremy Corbyn will want to talk about austerity. He will actually want to use this to sort of pivot away from a kind of narrow Brexit debate. I don't think it will shine any light on the issue. I don't think it will help us as a country to move on. It won't give us the closure that we and also desperately... And with seven or eight people, will it just be a Ramy? Well, it's, I, 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 you know, I would actually think I think it, I think Adam's point is right. We need a proper commission to set this up yeah, to take away get the that politics. Not now, but in no. a way, but in a way, I think it would be better to sort of not have these. Ways. I think it could actually harm your campaign in the long run if this is a dog's well, dinner. Well, except there's a crucial aspect yeah. which helps the campaign is Mrs May has finally said she wants to do debates. And, oh, if, yeah, uh, uh, and the, it'd be difficult for her to duck well, the, the next time She might not round. be around next the, time yeah, round. Yeah. Thank the you both very much indeed. The last time she debated was her husband on the one show and it didn't, was not very illuminating, let's Thanks be honest. Thanks very much indeed.